Well, hi there. This unusual creature is an axolotl. It isn't actually that unusual. Really, it looks pretty much like a salamander. Specifically, it looks like a juvenile mole salamander, which it is. These are closely related to other mole salamanders like spotted salamanders and tiger salamanders. And while juveniles, they all look a lot like this. They have the shape of a salamander, except with big feathery gills protruding from the sides of their head, making them very easy to distinguish from other juvenile amphibians like frogs that have internal gills. So far, everything looks normal. The big difference is that while most amphibians eventually metamorphose, lose the gills and move out of the water, at least some of the time, axolotls don't. Most of the time they grow up and mature, but retain the gills and the fully aquatic lifestyle generally reserved for juvenile amphibians. This is a condition called pedomorphism or neoteny, the retaining of juvenile characteristics in adults. So these guys do not go through metamorphosis. This is what they look like as juveniles, and they also look like this as adults. Though metamorphosis can be induced artificially by injecting them with iodine, which simulates the thyroid hormones that would usually induce metamorphosis. This is possible to do, but rarely results in a long-lived terrestrial axolotl. So axolotls are basically like lost boys, you know, that are girls half the time. And they mature while looking like big kids, you know, instead of pirates. Unless you inject them with iodine, in which case they will turn into pirates, but they will probably not live very long. Also like pirates. And they live underwater, like mermaids. They have the basic body shape of a crocodile. And as it turns out, thanks to science, some of them even glow like Tinkerbell. So you have your choice of names. I think I'll call this one Rufio. But the big question is, are axolotls good pets? And is the cast of hook encapsulated in the body of a salamander the best pet amphibian for you? To help you figure this out, we'll need to score the axolotl based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. And if at any point during this video you find yourself enjoying it thoroughly, please subscribe to our channel. We have hundreds of awesome reviews just like this one and so much more. When it comes to handleability, we give the axolotl a score of 3 out of 5, which is a very high score considering I don't think you should hold them at all. Like most amphibians, it's advisable to keep handling at least to a minimum. They can absorb chemicals, bacteria, and other impurities that may be on your hands right through their skin. This is a common issue with handling across amphibians, and axolotls are just no exception. But where axolotls are an obvious exception is that they live all of their lives underwater and have feathery, delicate gills. And the gills aren't so much of a problem because of respiration. Axolotls, at least adult axolotls, have lots of ways of breathing. I honestly can't think of an animal with more. The way that vertebrates get oxygen is by getting blood very close to something with a higher concentration of oxygen, such as air or water. That's what gills do. But it's also what lungs do, and adult axolotls, despite being totally aquatic, have lungs in addition to their gills. But wait, there's more. That skin that they have that is damp and can allow chemicals and impurities to enter their body can also allow oxygen from air or water to enter their bloodstream. And if that isn't enough, the thin membranes in their mouth can do the same. This is called buccal respiration. And as long as they do not dry out, about all of these systems will function. So while I wouldn't recommend keeping them on land for an extended period, it isn't because they're going to rapidly suffocate. But it is probably pretty stressful for them to be on land. For one thing, those gills could easily be damaged, which could definitely be an issue in the short term. The good news is that axolotls are sort of like slow-motion aquatic versions of Wolverine or Deadpool, just in case you didn't find a name you liked in Hook. Though I am unaware of them having the ability to drop their tails voluntarily, some salamanders can, so it wouldn't blow my mind. But if it is lost, they can grow it right back, which is pretty neat. But it doesn't end there. They can also regrow limbs if lost, which is super cool. But it goes even further, because they can even regenerate neural tissue, like portions of their spinal cord or even their brain. It's nuts. 
So if you do end up injuring one without killing it, you can know that it will probably bounce back like the T-1000. While they have teeth, they're not sharp or likely to cause any injury to you. They don't have any claws. What I'm saying is that all of the risk of handling an axolotl is to the axolotl. They're easy to handle and can survive some time on land, but don't do it for fun. Handle your axolotl like it was a betta fish. And be careful with those gills. It's not difficult to do, but only do it when necessary. When it comes to care, we give the axolotl a score of 3 out of 5. This is a fish. Not only phylogenetically, as I would consider all tetrapods to be fish, at least if shark and trout are both fish, but in terms of care, there is just nothing about this animal that sets it apart from fish. Specifically, a relatively cold water fish. We're talking temperatures in the mid-60s Fahrenheit. That's around 18 degrees Celsius or 291 kelvins. That's probably colder than your home. If you keep your home too much warmer than that, it will place the health and life of your axolotl in jeopardy. So what does all this mean? Well, it means that you need to set up and run a fish tank and you will probably need a chiller. That isn't the hardest thing in the world, but it is definitely a bigger pain in the neck than what you get with most other mole salamanders. And if I need to set up a temperature-controlled fish tank, there are a lot of other fish that are more fun to watch than axolotls. Keeping a fish tank means that you will need to understand things like the importance of dechlorinating and conditioning water, how to cycle an aquarium, pH, and other water parameters. We explain many of these in our video about freshwater stingrays. And, like freshwater stingrays, axolotls make a big mess in terms of nitrogenous waste. This means that you need a good filter and frequent water changes. But be sure that the water flow is not too fast. Some things unique to axolotls will be your choice of substrate and the need for cool water. Axolotls, like many fish, are suction feeders, but they have a nasty habit of sucking in pieces of gravel larger than they can pass through their digestive tracts, leading to impaction. Additionally, their scaleless, delicate skin can easily be damaged by rough or sharp substrates. In general, this means that fine sand is the best substrate for them. Rinse it thoroughly, though, or it will make a terrible mess of the water. To keep the water cool, your best bet will be a chiller. Given that they can potentially grow to be over a foot, are messy, and need their aquarium to be temperature controlled, I would recommend an aquarium around 20 gallons for one axolotl. You can get away with a smaller one, but it's going to be more difficult to keep conditions right. As for food, axolotls are optimistic carnivores. This means they will eat about any animal they can fit in their mouths. So, things like fish, shrimp, worms, really any small, live, or dead animal commonly used as fish food, these will all work. Variety is really the key, and uh, keep that in mind if you're planning to add any friends to the tank, because uh, they're optimistic. And just be careful in general not to overfeed them or leave uneaten food in the aquarium, as that will really mess up your water. I'd like to take a moment just to say thank you to our patrons at Patreon, and to draw your attention to the fact that Every week for our patrons, we have an entire extra video called Patreon Extras. And I can tell you, this week's Patreon Extras video is a doozy, and you probably don't want to miss it. So, if you don't already support us on Patreon, maybe maybe go at least check it out. And uh, if you do, thank you so much. You are allowing us to do so much, and I hope you enjoy that video. When it comes to hardiness, we give the axolotl a score of 4 out of 5. Assuming that you give them proper care, they should be pretty hardy. Problems are likely if you don't give them the correct substrate. Even no substrate can lead to stress. Also, if you don't monitor and maintain proper water conditions, then you can have all kinds of problems. And if you keep them too warm, well, you can have problems. Also, avoid overfeeding. These things all factor into care, but they are different than the needs of most reptiles and even other adult amphibians, so don't mess them up. For all intents and purposes, it's a fish. A fish with four ways of breathing that can regenerate parts of its own heart and brain if injured. I mean, they're hardy. Most of their health issues are just related to poor water quality, too much heat, wrong substrate, or overfeeding. Avoid these, and your axolotl should live over a decade. When it comes to availability, we give the axolotl a score of 5 out of 5, which is a lot more than can be said of their wild populations. These guys come exclusively from a few lakes near Mexico City, Mexico. Water pollution and invasive fish have reduced the wild population down to somewhere between 50 and 1,000 individuals, according to the International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources. It is not at all unlikely that they will become extinct in the wild in the near future. That said, 
They are thriving in captivity. We've been keeping and breeding them in captivity for well over a hundred years. Due to their relative ease of care, hardiness, and incredible regenerative ability, they have become a very popular subject for research. Genetic research has provided us with a number of interesting natural mutations such as albinism and leucism. We have a whole video about color morphs if you want to understand more about that. And recently, we have been blessed with axolotls that are biofluorescent. You know, no big deal. This is not a natural mutation, at least not in axolotls. Green fluorescent protein, GFP, the protein that causes this fluorescence comes from the crystal jelly, Aquaria victoria. And that's super cool. But if you've seen our video on moon jellies, you probably know that keeping jellies is a bit involved. Just too bad. But wouldn't you know it, the instructions for how to produce this GFP protein are in the DNA of the jellyfish. And we now have the technology to identify which segment of DNA produces it. And you know who else has DNA? Axolotls. And if you remove this GFP coding segment of DNA from a jellyfish shell and insert it, say, into the genome of an axolotl zygote, you can guess what happens. You get an axolotl that, when exposed to blue or UV light, fluoresces green like a scorpion. Or more accurately, like a crystal jelly. These are transgenic organisms. Combine that GFP with albinism and you get Tinkerbell for sure. What all this means is that axolotls are not only very common in captivity, but they're available in a wide and in fact crazy diversity of colors and degrees of luminescence. These axolotls all come to us from Animal Ark in Orem, Utah. They have an impressive selection of healthy axolotls, as well as a wide diversity of reptiles, amphibians, fish, birds, arthropods, and basically all of the kinds of things we tend to talk about on this channel. If you're ever in Orem, Utah, say as part of your trip to visit Clint's Reptile Room, then you should totally drop by Animal Ark and check it out. But if you want to get an axolotl, they're very available in pet shops, expos, and online. They're doing well in captivity. This means that while they may be lost in the wild, they're likely to endure in captivity for a very long time. What David and Tracy Barker have coined as the invisible arc. Habitat destruction is the great threat to most species on this planet. And many, like the axolotl, may only be saved by captive husbandry. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the axolotl a 3 out of 5. I was tempted to go higher. Axolotls themselves are not crazy expensive, though prices can glow higher in some cases. This is not an appropriate aquarium for an axolotl, but the aquarium you need is pretty inexpensive for a fish tank. But it's still a fish tank. And chillers will be around the same price as a heater, which you won't need, though some chillers are considerably more. Water conditioner, sand, and food are your main other costs. A full spectrum light will be needed, especially if you want to see your GFP do its thing. And you will need water testing supplies. And this is why overall we give the axolotl a score of 3.6 out of 5. If what you want is a fish, but with legs, and you want it to have the ability to regrow those legs, and also most of its other body parts, and it wouldn't hurt if it could fluoresce like a jellyfish, then the axolotl might be the perfect pet, well, non-amphibious amphibian for you. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Hello, friend. But the big question is... Wait, hold on, it's still going. It takes a minute to turn on. Yeah, what the heck? Did you not install it on the entire air conditioning? I should have, I should have. I just <laughs> installed it on the tortoise lights. <laughs> Yeah, now they're off. I'm sure the tortoise appreciates that. I've learned that uh, a wood floor is not a good place for the clapper. <laughs> is our axolotls good pets? Oh, and, a sirens and a motorcycle. <laughs> Trains coming. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll wait for that. <laughs> but the big question is: Are axolotls good pets? And is the <laughs> I called it. <laughs> Is that legitimately a train? Yeah. Views just like this one and so much more. Do that last one one more yeah. time. Oh, that hurts. I have a guy chained up back there. That makes so much sense. Yeah. That's us guys. Get out. <laughs> Though prices can glow higher in some cases. Ha <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so many. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you need to process that. But Will was disapproving immediately. <laughs>